everyone, this is Lydia and today I am going to show you how to do a perfect writing assignment that your teacher will ask you to do after reading any story. I will guide you through all the steps that will make you master a writing paragraph that includes all the elements needed to make your writing assignments easy and a great fun. I am going to select a story from this book, will post it on my channel, then I am going to show you how the final paragraph looks like. How long have I been in here? Dexter wondered. Hours? Weeks? Years? Centuries? I have to get out. Dexter pressed the off button on his spacesuit. Then he floated to the ground. The training room door opened, and Dexter climbed out. Good job, Dex, his teacher, Ms. Luna, said. Four minutes. Longer than last time. Still not enough to pass the test, Dex sighed. And there, blood goes to my head. My head feels stuffy and hurts. I get sick whenever I am weightless. I think I should learn to fix robots instead. Dex needs to stay longer in the weightless training room. Ms. Luna smiled. She could not argue with or dispute what Dex said. The weightless room had no gravity. Gravity is the force that pulls objects toward Earth. Without gravity, people float around. Blood can go to a person's head, making it hurt. But Dex did not leave the anti-gravity or AG room because he felt sick. Dex left because he was scared. Dex had lived on this station on Mars since he was born. Life on Mars was great. Rain and snow never coated roads or stopped soccer games because a big, rounded dome covered the whole town. Robots, or mechanical helpers, decided what the town needed. They calculated the correct amounts of water and heat. The town had grown quickly since people began living there in 2147. It had everything people needed. Now, almost 100 years later, Mars was Earth's largest, most successful settlement. This robot picks tomatoes. The first townspeople grew only a few crops, like potatoes, peas, wheat, and lettuce, in greenhouses. These small, glass-covered houses were very important. The plants gave people food, and they helped keep the right amount of gases in the air. Their bright, pretty colors and tasty flavors also reminded people of Earth. As time passed, people worked to grow more crops. Progress brought juicy red tomatoes and robots to pick them. People used every plant. No one wanted to waste any. They had very little room to plant extras. Now, after years of study, the town had new, bigger greenhouses. These were outside the dome. Big, bright lamps helped plants grow quickly in this area. People grew hundreds of different fruits, vegetables, and grains. Everything grew with great success. Because many more people now lived on Mars, they needed to grow more food. Every person in the town, age 13 and older, needed to help plant and bring in crops. Because there was no air outside the dome, Everyone had to wear spacesuits with oxygen tanks to breathe. Each person tied a strong rope to the suit. Then they tied the other end of the rope to the ground. Without ropes, weightless workers could float away into space. However, these exciting facts about farming on Mars really scared Dex. Later that day, 
Dex's mother, Mrs. Johnston, visited Miss Luna. Both women were worried about 10-year-old Dex. Ms. Luna said she told Dex that the inspector checked the weightless training room weeks ago. She told him about the room's better than most or superior construction. She also told him he would be perfectly safe, yet he was still scared. Mrs. Johnston, has Dex told you anything about the training? Ms. Luna asked. Yes, on the first day, Mrs. Johnston said. Dex asked me if the town would make him finish the training. The inspector checks the weightless room to make sure it is safe. What did you tell him? Ms. Luna asked. Did you know he was scared? Not at that time, but I think his six-year-old brother Jace knew. Mrs. Johnston smiled. I should explain. Dex and Jace are opposites. Dex is very, very careful. He always wants to do what the everyday average person would do. He is different from Jace. Jace hurries into anything that seems good, usually without thinking. My younger sister is very much like Jace. However, I am not nearly as careful as Dex seems to be, Ms. Luna said, smiling. I think his grandfather may have made Dex the careful child he is, Mrs. Johnston explained. His grandfather is a great storyteller, but sometimes he forgets that Dex believes everything he says, even if it is not true. Mrs. Johnston had more to say. Several days later, I heard Dex and Jace arguing. I went to their bedroom door to listen. They were talking about the weightless training room. Dex said he thought the town's farming rule was dumb. He said that he would not finish the three-year weightless training program. Of course, Jace said he would love to float alone inside a room. That way, he said, no one could tell him to brush his teeth, go to bed, or sit down. Jace wants to float in the weightless room. Their voices got louder and louder, Mrs. Johnston went on. I was about to step into the room when Dex walked angrily to the doorway. He said, Just ask Grandpa. Then you will not want to be weightless. Grandpa told me a story about a man who went to the fields to plant peas. The man floated upside down so long that his rope came loose. Then he floated away into space. Grandpa says, You can see his face every night. On the moon, Mrs. Johnston explained. Of course, his grandfather was joking. I tried to explain that to Dex, but he would not listen. He made his decision. He would never let himself float away into space and land on the moon. Ms. Luna sighed. Dex's problem was fear. What should she do? The following Thursday, everyone went to Mars Middle School for family night. The teachers and students showed the visitors different school projects. In the cafeteria, 7th graders made planetary pizza for the visitors. It used a super cheese called Mars Moose. In the gymnasium, 6th graders did special tricks on soft space foam. Some students bounced almost 40 feet into the air. In the library, Dex and other 5th graders used the school space cameras to take visitors on a computer tour of Pluto. Mrs. Johnston, Dex's grandfather, and Jace arrived just as Dex's class began the computer tour. Both adults watched the screen with interest. They wanted to see how workers built plastic houses under a dome over Pluto. Mrs. Johnston is worried about Jace. When the computer tour ended, Mrs. Johnston turned and said, would you like a home like that, Jace? But Jace was not there. She turned quickly to her father. Dad, where is Jace? I do not know, Dex's grandfather said. He was there a few minutes ago. Dex's grandfather hurried in one direction. Mrs. Johnston went in the other. Dex saw the worried look on his mother's face. He ran to her. What is wrong? He asked. I cannot find your brother. Mrs. Johnston cried, looking around. Where is he? Where is Jace? Dex wondered. Then he knew. The weightless room. Dex raced out of the library. He ran down the hallway to the science center. He pulled hard on the door and nearly fell into the big room. Jace? Are you here? Jace? He called loudly. Dex 
heard nothing. The center was quiet. On his way to the weightless training room, Dex stopped to listen. He heard a soft sound. He looked through a small window in the weightless room. His eyes opened wide. He was surprised. Chase! The little boy waved his arms as he floated across the small room. Tears covered his face. His cries for help were so soft that Dex hardly heard them through the window. Dex banged on the window. Do not worry, Jace. I am coming, he yelled. Dex shook with fear as he climbed into the spacesuit he found. There was no one else to help Jace. Dex knew he had to enter the weightless room and shut the door quickly behind him. Jace could crash to the floor if Dex let in too much air. Dex took a deep breath. Then he opened the door just enough to insert himself through the opening. The air made Jace move toward the floor. Luckily, he rose again quickly. Jace smiled in surprise and happiness when he saw Dex. Jace is happy to see Dex. The boys used swim-like movements to pull themselves toward each other. They hugged quickly when they reached one another. Then Dex pressed the off buttons on their suits. You saved me, Jace cried. I helped, Dex replied softly, but I didn't really save you. The room would have shut off after 30 minutes anyway. I was scared. Were you? Jace asked. Not really, Dex said, surprising himself. The weightless training worked. I had no time to be scared. I think I am ready for my 10-minute test. Dex helps Jace and learns something about himself, too. Target Skill Author's Purpose What was the author's purpose in writing this book? What other details support the purpose? Copy and complete the chart below. Write about it. Text to world. Imagine that your teacher asked you to write a report on life in another country. Think of some important topics to include. Put the information into correct outline form. Target vocabulary. Average. Calculated. Centuries. Dispute. Insert. Inspector. Mechanical. Progress. Superior. Waste. Target skill. Author's purpose. Use text details to figure out the author's reasons for writing. Target strategy. Question. Ask questions before you read, as you read, and after you read. Genre. Science fiction is a fantasy story whose plot often depends on scientific ideas.